Hi, everyone. It's George LaRock at WorkTech. Welcome back. We are continuing the Greenhouse interview series in advance of Greenhouse Open. And before we get into today's conversation, we've got a good one. Uh, let me remind you all that Greenhouse Open takes place on May 24th and 25th at the Javits Center in New York City. It is one of my favorite events. It really kicks off the spring event series. And Greenhouse does an amazing job um, curating an experience that's valuable to, to not just their customers, but anybody in the industry. It's highly recommended. And links are here wherever you see where you're seeing this to reserve your seat. So let's dig in. I said it's an interesting conversation, and I, I'm really looking forward to this one. We're joined by Andrew Flowers, the labor economist from AppCast. Andrew, welcome. Hey, George. Uh, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Yeah, I um, I geek out on the you know on data and you know economic impact. Um, so I've been looking forward to this. So uh, I, I I'll I'll go easy. I won't go too deep. Uh, so the the audience won't uh, I, I won't leave anybody behind. But could you could we just start with a simple intro? Maybe tell everybody about uh, yourself and AppCast. Yeah, George, uh, it's uh, it's my pleasure to do that. I, I'm the labor economist at AppCast, and uh, before that, I was an economist at Indeed and spent some time in uh, media at 538.com uh, and oh, okay. uh, as well as at the Federal Reserve um, in the research department there. So that's my background. I, I've been with AppCast almost a, a year. And uh, who are we? <laughs> what is AppCast? We're the global leader in uh, programmatic recruitment advertising technology and services. So that's a mouthful. <laughs> what does that mean? It means we help job ads work better with data. So we help enterprises programmatically distribute and optimize their job advertisements. Uh, we were founded in 2014. We have over 300 employees across uh, several countries. And uh, in 2019, we were uh, acquired by Stepstone, uh, one of the largest job boards based in Germany. So that's AppCast and, and that's me. I, I had the pleasure to work with an amazing data set of over 10 billion with a B uh, job clicks and nearly 2 billion applications or job postings. And uh, AppCast as a company, we, we manage uh, over a billion dollars annually in job advertising. Wow, that's, um, that's a really interesting seat that, that you have on, on what's happening. So, um, you know, I, a lot of times I'll get into sort of where the product fits in the uh, ecosystem, but um, I think anybody watching this gets recruitment marketing and, and jobs, but there, I'm really curious. Um, yeah, I've been in the industry a long time and the market's really evolved to where I'm meeting economists now uh, that are present within companies like AppCast. Can, can you give us a, put a finer point on, you know, how that data really impacts both decisions that AppCast might make and the ones that the system might make for the customer? Yeah, absolutely. The, the, the thesis behind uh, my job and my team at AppCast is that for recruiters to understand labor market data and apply those insights, it is critical in this environment, in this economy, to be competitive because the labor market has changed so significantly, not only because of the pandemic, not only because of these macroeconomic headwinds like very high inflation or uh, uh, labor shortages in certain industries, but because data is the lifeblood of recruiting. As you know, as the industry has been trending now for decades to use data effectively, it's really the combination of two different kinds of data. Uh, one is the traditional labor economic insights that you can get from publicly available data like that the Bureau of Labor Statistics puts out, but combining that with uh, platform specific, source specific data on recruitment marketing. And so that's where AppCast data set comes in to provide very granular insights about what occupations and what markets are you recruiting for and tying those two together, this combination of labor economics and recruiting tactics, it's those two put together that I call recruitonomics. And we at AppCast just launched 
a new endeavor called um, Recruitonomics.com. And that's our hub for all these labor market insights that we believe are essential for recruiters uh, to keep track of. Yeah, I, well, I um, applaud you and AppCast for launching that. I'm, uh, I'd, lo I'd love to get your take on this. Um, my feeling is that um, much of what we've done in HR and that's talent focused, we've built these silos or stovepipes is another metaphor, but we've got internal talent management and internal mobility, we've got recruiting, and then we've got workforce planning and strategy. And um, there's a big movement, and I fully support it, to focus on retention and make sure that we're uh, we're looking there first, and that every hiring decision, internal or external, factors that in. You know the impact internally, but I think the big missing ingredient has been the the, the external perspective. You know where is the talent availability of the talent, the the pay scale for for talent. And I'm I'm really curious to get your take on whether you know you see that or and what kind of insights um, are helpful if 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 we're operating in this this future of work sort of mindset. Yeah, the, the insights that I think are most helpful uh, to break down these silos to synthesize the data. Uh, I think there are two kinds of insights. There's macro labor market insights and micro labor market insights. So on the macro side, think of big picture trends, whether it's for your industry or the occupations you're recruiting in, what are the big picture trends in terms of how challenging it is to acquire talent? Um, some base baseline context here, as a lot of recruiters are probably aware, this is a really challenging market, maybe the most challenging in decades to find workers. Now, why is that? So part of the explanation here, uh, that there are variables beyond any one recruiter's control, beyond any one company's control. So things like candidate supply and demand or competition, government policy, economic growth, those are outside of our control. Now, there are lots that we can control within the recruiting TA, HR world, right? So employer brand, your apply flow, your sourcing practices, those are things you can control. So the baseline context here is that in terms of macro labor market insights, the US economy is had an historic rebound from this COVID recession that began in 2020. We now have arguably the tightest labor market in 40, 50 years. And by tight, I mean, just look at the ratio of job openings to unemployed people. And it's almost two to one. And historically that gap is just, we've never reached that before. So there's just far more demand for workers than there is supply of workers. Um, so that's the kind of macro labor market context. We can get into specifics by industry, how, frankly, in 2022, at least, the U.S. economy is shrugging off COVID. Not that it's not a, a real force in the world for public health reasons, but we see strong job growth in uh, COVID-facing industries like retail and uh, leisure and hospitality or healthcare. So that's one factor. We see just accelerating wage growth. Uh, because partly inflation is at a 40 year high. We, we feel that as consumers, right? In terms of the, at the gas pump or a, in our grocery bill. So you have these macro factors, inflation, um, extremely strong labor demand that outstrips labor supply. Those are important insights in their own right. That's one channel. But the second channel of insights, those micro labor market insights, I think are re really critical. How do you drill down in terms of the specific occupations and markets you're recruiting in? Are you trying to hire registered nurses in Salt Lake City? Are you trying to hire software developers in Pittsburgh? And how do those markets differ? Not just in terms of what are the um, distribution of wages or salaries you need to offer to be competitive? What is market, in other words, for those roles? Yeah. But also, what are the costs it takes to get your job description in front of those eyeballs of job seekers. And that has gone up pretty dramatically. One of the things I'll, I'll mention it before we move on is in terms of micro insights, for a decade before the pandemic, we got lulled into complacency thinking that online advertising would only get cheaper. And sure enough, every year for the decade prior to the pandemic, the price for online advertising fell. It got cheaper and cheaper to, yes, run an ad on Google or on Facebook or on a job board like Indeed. 
But guess what happened in 2021? As we rebounded out of this recession, online advertising costs really spiked. And so from a recruiter's perspective, they're, they're really facing two challenges. One is a tight labor market that is just hard to get the right workers. But the other is expensive, partly because of inflation, but partly because online ad costs for businesses are going up. So they have to drill down with those micro insights to know what's market for the roles I'm recruiting in and what geographies. And so that's the kind of synthesis of micro and macro that makes recruitonomics so essential. Yeah, yeah, it's it's really uh, fascinating because you know t- ten years ago um, this was really aspirational, like having you know this data, but the tools, the data, it, it's all so much more accessible now. And so, does that allow, like, l- let's say I'm, you know, in, in my mind, if I'm looking at making a uh, an internal move with someone, you know, a promotion or, or literally a move, moving them to another division or something. Um, it would allow me to look at, you know, the cost of that, but also the cost of replacement. And maybe it doesn't mean we don't make, do the right thing and we don't make that move, but it may be the amount of planning and the amount of time, that lead time that we give ourselves before we execute in order to backfill or upskill. Is that, is that, is that the kind of help that this data will, uh, will give me? Yeah, to be able to um, understand the market for what roles you need to fill informs internal mobility. Like internal mobility, to your point, is such a huge phenomenon. It's it's such a huge importance right now in the recruiting HR uh, talent acquisition world. And I think there are good like social reasons for that in terms of morale and uh, just sentiment of employees to know that they have a place within an organization where they can stay for long longer periods and that they don't have to just move. But beyond just the kind of soft aspects of internal mobility, it really matters. These insights matter for internal mobility because it will be expensive for your organization if you don't prioritize internal mobility. Now, why is that? You probably have heard you know, the much ballyhooed phrase, the great resignation, right? So in my mind as an economist, I, I, I see that concretely in the data because elevated quits rates across a number of industries are really pronounced. So whether it's uh, retail or uh, professional business services, you go down the line, white collar, blue collar, quits rates are really high. Now, from a labor economist perspective, that's a good thing. It's a, it's a, it's a signal that workers feel confident they have other options out there because, of course, they do. Right. I mentioned there's almost twice as many job openings as unemployed people. But get this, when it comes to wage growth, the strongest wage growth is occurring for job switchers. So people are not quitting work to like give up on work altogether. They're just getting better offers, right? And mm-hmm. it's more expensive for a company to hire a replacement because the wage growth for job switchers is much higher than job stayers. So why do you prioritize internal mobility? It improves current employees' morale. But frankly, it also improves the bottom line because a worker is maybe willing to stay, even if they can get a slightly better wage elsewhere, if you can signal to them that they have a future there. Yet, if you don't signal that they have a future, if you don't take internal mobility seriously, they're likely to quit and leave because they have better options elsewhere. And then when you hire their replacement, it's going to be at a higher cost. Aside from all the onboarding, lost human capital that comes from when you have turnover like that, it's actually gonna be a higher bottom line cost to the company that doesn't value internal mobility. Okay, yeah, that's really well put. Um, I, you know, I'm, I'm excited for your session uh, to he- learn more about these things. Are, are, there, are there any, um, any points that, that you'll be talking about? Like what, what will people be hearing about um, at Greenhouse Open uh, from you? Yeah, so my presentation is going to be uh, intense and comprehensive and fun. So it's going to be intense because I want to cover a lot of ground. I want to talk about some of the themes I've already mentioned, how the U.S. labor market to just brief and level set. We're in an economy that arguably is too hot, and we're seeing policymakers like the Federal Reserve begin to kind of pump the brakes a bit and try to cool it off by raising interest rates. And One of the headwinds that is a risk to our outlook, that's a risk to recruiters and to businesses, 
is this high inflation and whether it could spiral into what economists call a wage price spiral. Because right now we see really strong wage growth because prices have risen strongly, whether it's mm -hmm. gasoline or food. But there's going to be a part of my presentation where I investigate whether it could become a wage price spiral. So right now it's wage to price. Uh, and whether it's going to be uh, price to wages, we're going to see how that could spiral out of control, potentially. That's a risk to the economy. And how the war, frankly, in Eastern Europe also has a macro imp macroeconomic impact for recruiters. So these big picture themes like inflation and war actually do have macroeconomic channels where they impact recruiters. That's one bit of the presentation I'll cover. Um, and then I have uh, an extended segment that I'm excited to talk about, not short-term factors, but long-term forces that are shaping recruiting, not over the next few quarters, but the next few years or even decades. So forces like demographic trends, the aging of the baby boomer population, the acceleration of retirements we saw during the COVID pandemic, and the lack of working age population growth in the US in the decades to come, unless we have greater immigration. And talking about how immigration, how immigrants really fill uh, a need in terms of alleviating labor shortages in those industries that are suffering the most. So that's a long-term factor demographic, demographics. Another long-term factor is technology. I, I talk uh, quite a bit in my presentation about how work from home has transformed the economy, how it is changing what jobs job seekers are looking at and how recruiters uh, have expanded their pool of hireable talent. Uh, work from home is here to stay. It's not going anywhere, but there's bargaining happening because job seekers and employees want it more at the moment than employers are willing to offer. And how that bargaining shakes out is something I cover. And then finally, under this umbrella of long-term forces that affect recruiting, I talk about politics. And uh, George, you know, I'm not left, right, or center. It's not about endorsing anything political uh, or a platform or candidate. It's about just this no-nonsense fact that the labor market is greatly impacted by government policy. And whether that comes through resurgence of unionization, we see that in Amazon or in Starbucks, or whether it's through uh, proposals, whether it's like universal child care, uh, that could greatly affect recruiting uh, for, for better and for worse. And so analyzing those political trends, I think, are really important uh, for the law. Again, the long term perspective here uh, for strategic planning, recruiters should be aware of short term trends, but also these long term forces. Wow, I'm, I'm excited for your session. I uh, you hit on every possible question I could want to ask you as an economist, and I I'm, I'm really looking forward to this and I. I I, I know you'll have a full house um, given you know what's happening in the world. I, I'm seeing most of the uh, employers that I work with are they're asking all of those questions. How is the economy going to impact hiring? How is it going to impact my desk, our team's desks? And I think you're you're getting right at a lot of that. So um, yeah, looking forward to it. So other than your session, uh, is there anything that you're looking forward to at, at Greenhouse Open? Conversation. I, I, I'm going to be hanging out there uh, for both days, and I just want to meet people and have side conversations. So please, uh, before or after my talk, just not during, uh, come up to me and uh, let's chat. Because yeah, I will be presenting a lot of charts and numbers, but blur your eyes and let's talk about the story underlying that. Sometimes data for data's sake gives no insight. And there's an underlying story here about the economy that I think is going to help recruiters do their job better. And I want to help. So conversations and hearing your story, I think, is going to help me do my job better, too. So come up to me, talk to me. That's what I'm looking forward to the most is, is frankly, the, the, the informal uh, before and after session conversations. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. It's great to be back live again and, and be able to, to be able to have those. Um, well, I want to thank you for your time, Andrew. This was this was great. I could I could go for another you know hour, uh, but I know we'll be with you in New York City and uh, we'll be able to engage there. So thank you so much for being here. Hey, thank you, George. Appreciate it. Glad to be here. All right, and uh, just a reminder: Greenhouse Open takes place May twenty fourth and twenty fifth at the Javits Center in New York City. The links are here wherever you're seeing this. 
And um, thanks to our guest, Andrew Flowers, and thanks to Greenhouse. And hopefully we'll see you all in New York City.